So let's see, let's go to our etherpad and welcome everyone. Uh, do we have someone uh, joining over? I, I can't see the, um, the participants in this meeting. Um, let me check here. I see two phone yeah, numbers, but I can't, I have no idea who they belong to. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so welcome. I see that uh, we don't have uh, anyone yet from the community, but we can get started. Um, and let's start with the previous action items. Um, um, Kadir and Madalina, uh, 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 take a look into the top 25 contributor issue. Uh, yes. No? Yeah, we can talk. It works. Yeah, so, uh, hello? so um, hello. Hello. Do you want to take this one, Kadir? There is. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so the issue is that uh, there is a bug. Uh, bug is filed. We will get to it in the uh, fifth sprint. Apparently, the Karma uh, data doesn't accumulate as it should be. Um, so right now we only have nine people in the uh, uh, top contributor list where it should be 10 and it doesn't match the last three months of karma data. So there is a bug somewhere. We're going to find that uh, in the sprint that is starting tomorrow. Hopefully. I guess. Okay, so... Okay, I'm sorry. so I'm sorry. London and Berlin. London and Berlin. Berlin. All the time. So thank you. Um, okay, so we have that. Uh, Kadir also linked to the Etherpad. So if you want to see what the bug is all about, just uh, click there and you'll see it. And Kadir, it looks like it's again you um, to look into the troubleshooting info and uh, updates there. And now I finally found the Etherpad. Um, all right. So, in fact, uh, we were not collecting uh, troubleshooting data because of a bug for quite some time. We started collecting uh, troubleshooting data um, on threads again last week. And the update I, update I have is that it's actually um, quite a phenomenal success. So now about one third of all questions coming into the forum have troubleshooting data. That is the data that is living in about support the one that we were asking for um, manually before, which gave us about, I think, 5% or so of questions with troubleshooting data. Now that we have automated that, now that we have the add-on, um, it's a stream streamlined process, and about a third of the users are giving us that information now, which makes it a lot easier to diagnose issues, because now we can also see add-ons installed and uh, some of the settings changed. That helps us a lot to um, get a better understanding of what the situation is without having to have this back and forth between what extensions do you have, what versions are, are there, and stuff like that. So that's pretty exciting. Okay, that sounds good. Um, I see that those were the two previous action items. Anyone has any comments on these questions, or should we move on to the development update? It seems to be that we can move on. Um, so development update, uh, Ricky, uh, Kadir, you want to uh, let us know what's going on? So usually I fill this out, but uh, unfortunately there was no time before the meeting today, so I didn't get to it. Um, I will try to uh, catch up with that later. Um, but what I can tell you is that this sprint we will focus on um, uh, clustering forum data. And um, you can, if you're interested, you can follow along in the forum data clustering that I'm going to link from here. Oh, you already put something in there? No, I didn't put that there. I'm just picking. So this will be one of the major uh, issues that we will focus on in this sprint. And next to that, we will work on our 25% items. Um, and a link to the fifth sprint is also in order which is not yet uh, settled on. Right. 
Yep, but form data clustering is the one thing that we will be focusing on in the next two weeks. And the benefit that you will see there is that uh, you will be able to uh, uh, use the IA in the forums to narrow down on um, specific issues. Like you will be able to see issues like what is it, download and install issues, customization issues, uh, problems and error messages and stuff like that. So you will be able to actually narrow down by that. Um, which we have implemented, um, I think, some time ago, but now we are getting the user interface for that so that contributors can also uh, benefit uh, from that implementation. That's what I have for um, uh, Sumo development this week. Any yeah, questions? That, that sounds good. Well, no, I think that's good. If you if you want to fill in some other details later, so yes. that anyone interested can look at the Etherpad, that would be great. Um, I'll put the regular data in there after the meeting, so you can come back to this later and see what's going on. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, I think that there are no uh, UX uh, updates. Um, I don't see Brown, but um, mm -hmm. I guess that you will be working in London. Maybe uh, Kadir, um, I don't know if everyone was at the beginning of the of the meeting. I don't know if you were recording already, Michael. But otherwise, you could tell. You know, you can you could talk a little bit more about that, right? Right. So we mentioned this already at the KB meeting last week. Um, but this week we have a small mini meetup in London, where we are looking at um, our um, our support platform. And we're looking at the user flows through the through the platform. Of course, we have thousands upon thousands of user flows, how people use the site to go from one to the next page. But there are a few major paths that the majority of our users are taking. Um, so we are looking at those major paths, about a dozen, and we're looking at where the uh, bottlenecks are. Where are the uh, pages? What are the spots where people are dropping off from the page without having uh, their goal uh, uh, actually accomplished. So those are mostly navigation pages. Uh, people come to the site and they drop off. Or we realize that about 50% of our users leave the site within five seconds. And we want to understand why is that happening and what can we do. So during this uh, week, we will come up with a number of um, experiments that we want to do. Uh, to test the hypothesis, uh, the assumptions that we have about those cases. So we will test a number of things um, and we will um, uh, essentially test our own understanding and uh, come up with variations of those things and hopefully in, in the next few weeks and the next few months we can implement them and see the benefit there. But uh, we have really high hopes of uh, changing or are making a big difference for a very large number of users. Just to put that into perspective, we have about 21 million people coming to the uh, support site every month. And um, yeah, 50% of those are dropping off within five seconds. So if, if, we, can help, if we can make changes uh, to help those 50% even a bit, that will be just an extremely big improvement. That, that's that's what we're sounds, yeah, that, that sounds very good. So it's it's good that you know that everyone can know uh, what you guys are working on. Uh, and if you need any help uh, from us or from the community, just post on the forums or let us know uh, if anyone can help there. But yeah, I think that's uh, that sounds pretty good. And um, we will have we will report on the findings here. So next week or the week after that, we will hopefully have something that uh, gives a compact view of uh, what we are, what our findings were during our sessions here and what we will try to do about that in the next few weeks and months. Okay, that sounds that sounds very good. So, you know, in case someone missed the KB meeting, now no, we're, we're saying it again. Um, anyone, any questions? Um, otherwise, we can go to the roundtable topics. Um, I, I would like to, I mean, are we moving to the round table? Yeah. Already? Okay, because there is there are two questions here, and I would like to take that one. Um, Andrew was asking us about the user assurance group, and then John was making a suggestion that all these things should be covered by contributor training and guidelines, uh, which I agree with, uh, because there right now there are loads of topics on the contributor forums uh, related to different things. 
um, about like how to moderate the forum, how to act in certain um, in certain situations. So I think what we should do is to take all of these uh, and put them in all one thread only, uh, so that everybody we can discuss about them, and then we can uh, make like a proper for a moderator um, guidelines for everybody to see. Because right now everything is scattered around, uh, but basically all these things, user assurance, threads not related, posts in foreign languages, they all come under the same thing, which is how do you actually answer on the forum? How do you moderate the forum? So let's start a new thread um, and cover all these topics. Um, I will make sure to post this in the contributor forums and take all the topics and put them in one place. And then we can continue the discussion there. Yeah, that, that sounds actually very good to have it all uh, in one place. And thanks, Andrew, and for John for putting the questions there. Um, and yeah, anyone, anything else that you want to say about it or questions? Otherwise, we move to Firefox desktop. Um, is Tyler in the call? I can't see you, Tyler, if you're in the call. Yep, I'm here. I'm face muted. Um, but pretty much the only thing that we have going on on the forums right now is an issue with MSN it appears they changed something with their cookies. Um, and if you or if you see someone in the forums uh, who gets a white page when they go to msn.com, just clear the cookies for MSN. That'll fix it. Um, I put a couple uh, updates in the contributor forums last week, specifically around a crash that we have in Covenant Eyes with Firefox, and a few other things around 19. But those are all covered in the forums. So. Oh, that sounds good. We don't have many things to worry about. <laughs> and just clearing cookies is going to help it. That sounds good. Uh, Roland from the green room, uh, tell us something about Firefox Android. I think you're muted. Hi. 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 Oh, no. No echo. Um, la are we recording? We're recording right through Michael Verde's awesome uh, third-party non-video machinery. Um, yes. Uh, last week we found a pattern in the input, a very small pattern that seems to indicate this slowness that's going up release by release in Firefox for Android seems to happen more, seems to happen more with um, Jelly Bean devices. So I have the links there. Um, if you have a Jelly Bean device and would like to help us out, it would be awesome if you could install Firefox 19 beta 6, um, surf around for a couple of hours, and then upgrade to the Firefox 20 beta upgrade and see if you get crash or slowness. That would be very helpful. Other than that, nothing to report. Oh, oh help article day on Thursday, please. Help us out, write articles, although the technical writing team uh, program seems to be moving along and helping uh, write mobile articles or Android articles as well as desktop articles. Everything's okay. cool. That sounds good. Uh, but yeah, we'll see on the help article day on Thursday. I think the review queues are going down and everything's uh, looking good now. So yeah, maybe there's less work, which is good because <laughs> it gets done uh, on other days also. There's been nothing waiting for review for more than a day for weeks now. Just FYI. Woo! Yeah. That's amazing. We do need well, more help with Android articles, though. So some people in the, to skip ahead a little tiny bit, some people haven't, um, there's still some Firefox 20 changes that no one has taken on, like, yes, I'll do that. We maybe get somebody, but as of this moment, okay. there's still some uh, not taken. Right. Uh, Michael, I was I was I was looking at the thread because the, there there was there's a thread in the technical writing uh, uh, program, and everyone's taking the the, the different uh, articles. Um, right. I thought maybe we could organize that maybe into like a little spreadsheet or something so that it's it's easier to know who's working on what. But that's just an idea. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. But yeah, I, it's very good to know that things are going so well and that you know like. That not you know not an article has been waiting for more, more than a, a day. It's just amazing, really cool. Uh, by the way, uh, Ralph, I don't know if Ralph is in the call uh, related to that. Brazilian Portuguese also. Uh, the review queue was like huge, and now it's down to zero. So we're also making progress on that, and and that's gonna keep new contributors coming in. So yeah, and for all contributors that are watching, like that's a, a great thing to get more people involved. 
but yeah, that wasn't related. Um, now we can switch to Firefox OS or any questions regarding this? No, I think that we can move to Firefox OS. Um, Michelle, are you taking that one? Yep, I'll take that one. Um, we had a lot of good press last week from the Mobile World Congress conference in Barcelona, Spain. Um, everyone was really thrilled that um, the press heard our message and understood it. So I put the points here. Um, the first point is that we announced many partners. So we announced 17 carriers and five OEMs last week, which is very exciting. Um, many of the, a couple of the big carriers you know, and then there's a huge long list of carriers, including Sprint, um, and Deutsche Telekom, Telenor, and Unicom China that are big players that um, announced partnerships with us for Firefox OS. Uh, and we also announced that, um, of course, uh, ZTE will build devices along with Alcatel, LG, Sony, and um, I'm missing one. What's the fifth one? LG? No, nope, uh, I got that one. LG, Sony, <laughs> CTE, Alcatel. And I, I don't know, I guess I can't remember. The, I'll get to it. Um, so the other big message that we wanted to get across was this is for emerging markets for someone who's coming from a feature phone. So a lot of people at the booth demos ask questions about price and our pricing will be um, competitive with a high-end feature phone price in emerging markets. We'll launch uh, in Venezuela, Colombia, and Brazil this summer, and then in the rest of the 25 countries where Telefonica operates uh, in 2014. Also, we'll launch with Poland, uh, in Poland with Deutsche Telekom and Alcatel in 2013. So it was an extremely exciting week with TV cameras and press everywhere. And we were sort of the darlings of the show with the biggest media explosion of, um, of the whole show. I think that um, some of our partners who announced, um, made announcements with this week felt a little like, oops, I wish we had. I wish we had a device to show <laughs> this week <laughs> so that we could be a part of the frenzy. Um, it was extremely exciting. And I wanted to thank um, all the contributors who have already written, helped to write articles for Firefox OS. You guys are awesome. Everyone preparing for these launches. Um, I thank you for all your help and especially to Rosanna and Ralph for their work with Mozilla Hispano and to Roland and Tyler for doing awesome work on Firefox for Android. I heard great things about your hard work on Firefox for Android this year from the Firefox for Android team that was at the Congress also. So thank you very much. Keep it, keep it going. Great, Michelle. That's really exciting, right? Um, uh, so much attention. I, I'm sure that all contributors could kind of see news about Firefox OS on their uh, local uh, media. Uh, I saw it like everywhere, so that's that's really exciting. Um, yeah, it's good to know that, that we're working something, you know, so, so amazing. Um, very nice. So uh, Thunderbird, I, oh, I think David, what place is going? No, I just wanted to add to what you're saying. Uh, I, I feel like I feel today like I'm I'm as excited today about working for Mozilla as I was when Phoenix uh -huh. Point Four shipped, and that was that was back in the days when everything was started starting. No one really knew what was going to come out of the whole project, and we all know just how successful that was. But it feels pretty much the same today with Firefox OS. It's this new thing. It's so promising. We have no idea how awesome it's going to be, but you know what? I think we, we can break that 450 million user record that we have with Firefox Desktop, and that excites me. Yeah, that sounds that's really good. Well, so just you know, because we have a lot of young contributors too. David, what year was that? Uh, this was uh, well. This was 2002 technically. It started to really um, accelerate in 2003. Actually, I wrote a blog post about this a couple of weeks ago. Which summarizes a little not well not my my you know excitement about it but but basically what what Firefox Desktop did for the market and and how it changed the whole internet 
Um, so that's so if you're curious, I can actually uh, paste the link to that yeah. somewhere in yeah, the agenda you can, you so people can see. Yeah, paste it, it on the Etherpad for anyone interested. But yeah, it sounds good. So. Uh, it's interesting because now we have contributors that at the time were maybe uh, still kids. Well, I mean, most of us were still kids, right? And <laughs> yeah. just, we're, we're still kids. Um, so yeah, it's kind of kind of great to, to have the chance to be you know at point zero at the very same time. So yeah, that's that's actually really really cool. I, th I think uh, I was a kid until the first the first time I started to see that my eyebrows had some individual hairs that were longer than one centimeter. So that's basically half a half an inch. <laughs> that's when I begin began to realize <laughs> I'm not a kid anymore. <laughs> but so I, I you know I, I very dis I'm very disciplined about taking them off. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to admit it. So. It's all being recorded. It's just <laughs> Yeah. And I'm also okay, very, so, uh, extrovert. So I hope you have other methods of finding out uh, if you're no longer a kid. Yeah, that's just one of the many ways you can find out. But, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was my way of, of realizing it. Yeah, uh, yeah I, maybe we, we, you should start a thread in the forum, David. Like, how do you realize this, that you're no longer a kid? I had yeah, a beard at a new, 10, so that was kind of, of a dead sort, giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this is getting uh, interesting. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, if anyone wants to let us know how, how to find out other ways to tell you a longer kid, that's good. Uh, but anyway, that's really exciting and um, yeah. Yeah, it, it does feel like something extremely new and, and big. Um, but anyway, we have to move on with the meeting and uh, Thunderbird, uh, Thunderbird, it seems to be that we have no update this week, uh, Roland. So, nope. uh, and the, uh, the release seems to be cool. No new problems. OK. That sounds good. Moving forward to metrics. Uh, Kadir, you, ha you have anything you would like to uh, talk about metrics? Um, so we are moving on with uh, the day, uh, rate limiting um, to protect ourselves from, from spammers in the KD. Uh, that is going to be in the fifth sprint. That's something that's not big last week. Uh, other than that, um, there is, uh, if I, do you want to talk about the um, localization need? Uh, for the other KPI? Yeah, or next week? Maybe next week. All right, so today. that's all I have uh, for now. Um, all the other data can be seen on the KPI dashboard. Okay. Uh, I, I just wanted to point out that we're you know, our contributor, our active contributors are going up, and especially the KB, you know, it seems that we got a, a, a hike in the KB, so, you know, maybe that's the reason why we have the review queues going down, everyone's so active with the technical writing program, so oh, good energy, I'd say, keep it coming, right? Yep. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, moving on to community updates. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the body program, what we've done so far, because you know we, everyone now that wants to step in and help us a little bit, uh, we have stretch, structured the body program. We know how we're gonna track people. We know how we're gonna distribute the, the bodies. We have already milestones that new contributors have to achieve, uh, and right now we're taking a look into the onboarding materials, like all the materials that we have to explain how Sumo works to contributors. Um, and Yusef, um, his, his nickname is, is Yalam, uh, 86, uh, he created this awesome system. He has these questions that he asks for like every single uh, document that we have, like can, can, can we find it easily, can we understand it, like he has a really cool uh, system. And he assesses all the documents that we have for, uh, you know, explaining for people how the KV works. Um, and now we would like to use his system to assess the forum materials and the localization materials. Um, so if you're interested and if you want to let us, you know, just go and take a second look at the materials and what's missing, maybe there's something that could be done better. Um, Jay is already working on videos because I think that we need a lot of videos, um, so that's progressing very well. But of course, we are open to new people who want to contribute and help us um, make the documents better. So an invitation to everyone. Yeah, Michael, please. Is there a link where people can go to, to get the questions to evaluate the articles? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me link to the uh, to the general Etherpad, and then I can link to the Etherpad where, where we have the the KB um, sort of like assessment. Um, I'll put everyone everything in there. Just let me get you that. So. And I'm putting it on the Etherpad. And the assessments are here. So you can you can see that uh, it's here. Uh, the model is the KB, uh, which is done by by Joseph, and then we have the forums and. Oh gosh, sorry. I'm just pasting it so that everyone has it right now, and you can click on it and take a look. Uh, we're splitting into working groups, but you know, just ping me or ping anyone. Jay, uh, Yusuf, and Andrew have been very active, so and Madalena, of course, and so we can we can guide you there. But you can take a look at there, and you know, maybe. These documents need to be re revisited like every once in a while, and you know it's not bad to see to have them uh, taken a look at by our contributors. So yeah, that's that's from the body program. Do you have anything else, Madalena, from uh, the community um, or or on the support forum? Because otherwise, then well, we'll talk about it when the support forum comes. In. Okay, perfect. So I don't have any updates for um, Eltenan other than what I said that uh, Brazilian Portuguese is moving up. So thanks a lot for Ralph who has been taking care of you know writing everyone. But of course we have amazing new contributors who have um, like updated lots of documents uh, and you know we met them at the at the event in Brazil and they're already they already have like 15 documents they've worked on or you know five and you know it's it's really really nice to see the Brazilian community growing. So um, thanks a lot. That looks good. The knowledge base, Michael, I think now it's your turn. OK. Well, just uh, so we have an article about uh, viewing PDF files right, in Firefox, which we updated because now we have a built-in PDF viewer. Um, and that article was complicated to update and complicated to tease out. Like, if you have this version of Firefox, these are the instructions, vice, all that kind of stuff, right? And then anyway, in figuring that out, Alice and Mad Person and Toby uh, uh, pointed out that the, the big issue for people in the forum is now that you have this built-in PDF reader and you actually really want to use something else like Adobe Reader or whatever, how do you switch back? And so those instructions are, it was part of incorporating those instructions in the article and how best to show them. So we also just made, I copied those instructions into a separate article and we swapped them for the Hot Topics and took the general PDF article out of Hot Topics and put the specific how do you switch back thing in Hot Topics, which is performing way better now. Um, so that was very cool uh, that they figured that out. Um, tech Writing Group working on Firefox 20 updates uh, this week. And a reminder about the help us write mobile articles and we'll make you an apprentice reviewer uh, experiment that we're running. The details there in the contributor forum. But um, the idea is uh, all Firefox OS articles and like 99.9% .9 of the uh, Android articles are the kind that, you know, as a reviewer, you can, you can uh, edit and self-approve. So um, we'd like to get more people doing that because they need lots of work. So um, new articles to be written, updates to be made, all that kind of stuff. So check that thread out. That's it. Well, that sounds good. So everyone, anyone interested? There's a lot of things to do. And um, yeah, thanks for the, for the updates. Um, now, Madalena, it's your time. It's my time. So it was for forum. Um, there is a question there from Alice related to the threads, not related to Mozilla. What are we doing with them? Um, so my first take on this one is we will need to answer those anyway, although they're not related and just tell people like this is not 
the place to ask a question like this. <laughs> Uh, you're not in the right uh, place and this is what you need to do. But again, um, as I said before, we need to discuss this as part of the forum moderator's guidelines. Um, so let's uh, make a new thread on that and discuss all these things because there are loads of it. There are like loads of situations like this uh, that can be tricky, especially for new people. Um, so it's important to make clear what we want to do um, in, in case we encounter some threats like this. So I'll start the thread, Alice, um, and then I'll, I'll post the link uh, so everybody knows where to go. And another thing that I wanted to tell you is that last week we had a sumo day and we had 98.2, I think, percent of the questions answered, uh, which is great because we had like 130 or 140 questions. So great job, everybody, um, and thank you for your participation. From last Thursday, I see that we keep going at 98.99. So that's a lot of uh, good work there. So thank you, thank you, um, and a group. That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, so yeah, that, that's amazing. I mean, that 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 shows that you know. Things are going very well, and you know we have a lot of, of very good energy. I feel. Yeah. Um, also, I just wanted to mention thanks to again Alice. Thank you very much for posting your your questions here. Everyone else from the community, if you can attend this meeting, uh, you know we love to get your questions and we try to answer them as best as we can. So just feel welcome to always post your questions. And uh, yeah. So. Um, I see that we had a lot of updates today. Um, I don't, I don't see a lot of uh, action items. I mean, we have a, a, a couple of, of things that we're working on where everyone's invited to uh, take part on. Um, but apart from that, I don't, uh, or maybe I missed something, uh, an action item that I missed. So it would be for you. It's like an invitation to, you know, be part of, you know, the technical writing program or the. Um, the articles that we need for Firefox uh, 20 on Android, or you know, the buddy program, or the support form, just you know, keep keep rocking. Looks good. And if there's no other questions, um, I think that we can uh, call it a day. But uh, well, call it a meeting. <laughs> but uh, anyone, any questions? Seems to be that we're good. So uh, yeah, great to have you here, and see you next week. Uh, and yeah, Thanks have a great, great week. Thank you. Adios. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Muchas gracias.